Hello friends, Jeff here from Squadron. As I mentioned in my earlier blog post review of Tamiya's 132nd scale De Havilland Mosquito, I wanted to do a follow along video build from start to finish of this beautiful and extraordinary kit. So well, it's time to get started. The idea behind the concept is for me to start and record the build. Secondly, to release segments of the build so you can follow along. Think of me as your crash test dummy. If I mess it up, at least you will learn something and it will prevent you of making the same mistake. By staying a step ahead of you guys in building the Mosquito, you will see firsthand how to handle any areas of concerns. Although I don't anticipate any problems considering Tamiya's reputation. Perhaps the methods and detail that I apply will hopefully inspire you to try new things and maybe it'll help you along the way. Most importantly, don't forget, if you get stuck, if you have a problem, if you have a question, if, if I wasn't clear on the video about something, I would like to hear from you. Please let me know, head on over to our website, click on the help desk, email me your question or concern, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I'm really excited to get this project rolling, so let's head on over to my workbench and get started. First thing we have to do is tackle the cockpit. A little trick is to basically look at the instruction sheet and line up all the sprues with the numbers. That will make your, your life a little bit easier. The first thing we do is to cut and clean the parts of the cockpit by removing them uh, from the sprue. Don't be discouraged if you have to repeat a couple steps. Sometimes the super glue might dry too fast or you place it and then it doesn't fit really well and you have to redo it so don't be really discouraged by doing this step over and over again just make sure that whenever you use the super glue and it doesn't go well on the first trial make sure that you clean the part again before you repeat this that step the first thing is to tackle the cockpit a good way to start is to look at the instructions and organize the sprues with the parts before cutting that way it is a lot easier to separate the specific number of pieces for each step after cutting the parts, removing the leftover injection stuff of each of the individual pieces, you can use a scalpel or an X-Acto knife. Further cleanup can be done with different grids of sanding sticks or sandpaper. It's very important that you test fit every part before gluing. Make sure you put parts in place where they belong before you apply the glue so you assure yourself that it's going to be a perfect fit. There are basically four different kinds of grades or grids of sanding sticks that a modeler uses. First is the coarse, the second one is the medium, the other one is uh, the fine, and then you have the extra fine. Well, the first grid you use is the coarse, which allows you to attack a surface that is really rough to remove flush, to remove ejector pin marks. The second one is the medium great that is used mostly to basically get the scratches out and the third one and the the fourth one which is the fine and the extra fine you can use for buffing purposes to really really try to get or eliminate all the scratches before painting smaller pieces of photo etch can easily be removed from the fret the fret is the it's like a frame like a sprue uh, you can compare it with uh, removing plastic pieces from a sprue it's the same way that you remove uh, photo edge pieces from the frame. It can be easily done with pushing a sharp knife onto a cutting mat. Photo edge are usually parts that are too small to render in plastic. Most of the time they used to simulate buckles, uh, harnesses, uh, belts, finer pieces of the instrument panel, levers, handles, anything that is too thick in plastic is usually supplied by the manufacturer in photo etch. To clean up the photo etch part, you can also use a finer grid of sanding stick. Photo etch is very hard to manipulate, uh, especially smaller pieces. So extra care is needed. So always make sure that you have some tweezers handy to pick up these pieces. I use tweezers a lot to clamp the piece of photo etch while sanding it instead of holding it into your fingers and not be able to reach the part where you want it to be, be cleaned up. So tweezers, a good pair of tweezers is, is very essential during the process of working with photo etch. Some of the photo etch is so small that it's very hard to manipulate with your fingers and that's why you need one or two different kind of tweezers to, to, for each piece 
to be able to pick it up, to hold it in place, and to use your standing, sanding stick accordingly. Anything that fits the purpose to get the result of getting your photo vets piece cleaned up, just do it. The brush I'm using right here is a, it's called a fiber brush. They come in two variants, one with regular nylon fibers and the other one with fiberglass fibers. The purpose of either of those brushes are actually to remove debris that are leftover dust or leftover scrapings. They're, ba they're basically cleaning brushes and they both have the same quality uh, as far as removing any residue, any dust that might linger around in, in hard to reach places. It also, the fiberglass brush, is also can be used as a sanding tool. Both cleaning brushes are also adjustable. You can easily uh, adjust the length of the fibers by turning the black knob on top of the brush. The fiber brush with the fiberglass hairs, that is the brush that is most common and, and actually the one that you use the most because it's being used as a sanding tool and the shorter the fibers, the more result you're going to get. So you're able to scrape more surface uh, or uh, eliminate a lot more debris on top. If you make the hairs longer, it acts more like, like a buffer, especially to, to uh, eliminate glue marks, little scratches. That's when you use it extended, when the, the hairs are almost completely extended. So basically, the shorter you make the hairs, the more it can be used as a, as a, a sanding device. The longer you make them, uh, it becomes softer and uh, it, it's more used as to buff up or to really clean uh, the surface instead of sanding it or, and making scratches. After gluing small parts to the cockpit or to any part of the airplane, once you apply a minimum amount of glue and you attach the part, it might be safe to uh, add some extra glue while the part is in place just to add a little bit of extra glue, just to make sure that nothing will fall off while you, you manipulate the, the, the piece or the part or the assembly, especially when painting. A little trick to ex extend drying time of the super glue is to place it on a plastic lid or on a piece of plastic sheet. It has the advantage that it will stay on there a lot longer than either if you place it on a piece of paper. A piece of paper will absorb the, the, the super glue and therefore dry up a lot faster. If you use a lid or a piece of plastic sheet, it's easy to manipulate and you can also place it on the side when you're done with, your, with, with the part that you're using it for and later bring it back and still use the same drop that you originally put on there. Some of the really small parts, as you see here, you can also remove by using, instead of using uh, sprue nippers, when the parts are really delicate and very small, you can easily remove those by the way of pressing uh, your scalpel or X-Acto blade onto the cutting mat and remove the parts uh, that way. If there are small parts that are hard to reach with a regular sanding stick or you need, a little, you need to be a little bit more delicate, and you don't have any sanding paper, a little trick is to slice a piece of sanding stick from, from its carrier. You basically use, a, again, a scalpel or an X-Acto knife and you try to literally slice the sandpaper from the stick. Then you have a little piece of sandpaper that you can bend, fold and just uh, shape into the right tool to do the trick. You have more than three super glues, but generally speaking, there are three uh, kinds of super glue. You have the thin super glue, uh, you have the medium, and you have the extra thick. The thin super glue is usually in the model world or in the model in the hobby business. It's usually used to glue small pieces. Uh, it's also extra fast. It's a lot faster than the medium and the thick uh, super glue. The extra thin super glue lends itself better to apply small parts, as like photo edge. Medium super glue is somewhere in between. It gives you a little bit more working time when gluing pieces together, while the extra thick super glue is basically used as a gap filler. When there is a, a seam or there is a, a gap or a dent, you can easily fill that, fill that up with super glue and wait until it's dry and then you just sand it. 
The little pad I'm using is a Scotch-Brite pad. It's also used in the same capacity as the cleaning brushes. It really helps to eliminate all debris or extra flash that the sanding stick accumulates. And so when you have plastic parts that have a little bit of flash or a little bit of fibers attached to it because of the sanding, these can easily be removed by with that little sand, with that little scotch bright pad. In some cases, when you glue two parts together, you end up with a seam. Like in this case, uh, I'm trying to glue the radio. By putting the two halves together, there was a big seam in between. To fill that up, I used the extra thick super glue and put on a bead of super glue along the ridge and along the gap. And once it, uh, it dry, it will serve as a, as a filler. And once it dry, you can easily sand it with either a sanding stick or a piece of sandpaper. The extra thick super glue lends itself more to uh, gap filling. When you end up with a seam or you have a little indentation or there is a little gap. As I explained before, assembly of the cockpit is, is pretty straightforward. I didn't have any problems in gluing the pieces or gluing the different assemblies. Everything is really well engineered by Tamiya. The best way to cut pieces off a photo etch frame is to use scissors and especially photo etch scissors. They're not always around and at the moment I don't have any here with me. Very small parts can easily be removed from the frame by just pressing a new scalpel blade or an X-Acto blade onto a cutting mat. The cutting mat will prevent the photo etch to be bent while cutting. Also, don't be discouraged if you drop the photo etch a few times. Once the photo etch is cleaned up, it's time to glue. Photo etch, as you will know, can only adapt to the plastic by, by using super glue. Again, make sure uh, while removing photo etch pieces from the frame that uh, you have at least a, a couple of uh, uh, tweezers handy. It is very important to have good reference material close for color references and also for detail. If you want to add some extra detail, as I will show you later on, it's very important to have those things handy like I'm showing here, the control column and the rudder pedal assembly. These things, to apply these things, are, are it can be pretty tedious and sometimes you have to do it like four or five times before it actually is placed in the right position. In our true detail range, we have the connectors and couplings. I didn't have anything handy uh, at the time I was building the Mosquito, so I made a couple myself on, on my lathe as I'm gluing on right here. All it is is just a little rod that I turned on my lathe and made a couple scribings in there to simulate a connector. For future pa painting purposes, it is very important that you keep some of the parts separated. Although the instruction might say, that you have to glue them on, but you know for sure that later on while you're painting the cockpit, you're gonna run into a problem. Just make sure that you split the cockpit up in a couple parts. Some of the parts needed to be painted separately, so it's very essential while constructing the cockpit that you on for beforehand know what parts of the cockpit to keep those separated. It will make your life a lot easier uh, then when you glue everything on and then afterwards you can't reach it with a brush or your airbrush or whatever. So make sure that you have a plan in motion while uh, building the cockpit. In the instruction sheet there are color references, but you have to make out for yourself what your level of skill is, you know, and, and, and it's better if you have an assembly, let's say you have a radio assembly and you have the, uh, the radio compartment, uh, you have the pilot seat, you have the navigator seat, it's better to keep those things separate because if, if you glue them all together, eventually you will end up in a nightmare because you can't reach, you can't go back anymore. Everything is assembled, glued together and you can't reach it. You already know that, okay, I 
this is an assembly. I put the radio together and eventually I have to glue it in the radio compartment, but uh, it might obstruct something or, or it might prevent me from painting the floor. So you leave the radio separate, you, then you paint the radio, you paint the floor and you put the two things together. To simulate some cables or wires, I like to prefer to use a milliput. It has the advantage, and I explained it in previous videos uh, and blogs, it has the advantage that you don't need to glue anything. Once you roll it, it's, it becomes very flexible. You can easily cut it, easily manipulate it, and easily apply it in the desired position. All you need is a little talcum powder, a little cup of water, and a fine brush, and an X-Acto knife. Another, good, another trick is to keep everything clean and to keep everything smooth is to use a piece, a piece of uh, plastic sheet as a base as a work platform actually uh, to manipulate the milliput into the right shape. You sprinkle it with some talcum powder. It's easy to roll with your fingers and, and stretch it until the desired thickness. This thing takes a little bit of experience. It takes a while. It's trial and error. I had to try it several times before I got the hang out of it. Of it. But honestly, once you get the hang of it, it opens so much possibilities that you can use it for. Plus it looks a lot more realistic than let's say a piece of copper wire or lead wire or solder. And the big advantage is you do not have to glue it. To apply it onto the, into, the, into the right position, you just make sure you have a little cup of water and a fine brush. And then pick it up with, with a moist brush and try to position it. It's very tedious and like I said before, it's trial and error. You have to do it several times before you get real good at it. But once you're there, again, it, it, it looks so realistic. Don't be discouraged. It happens to the best of us. I, I still have it on a regular base when I try to do something or apply it somewhere and it either sticks on my finger or it, it, when I cut it, it, it sticks on my knife and I have to do it all, all over again. But at the end of the day, the result is there and it's worth it. Another trick I learned is instead of trying to hold up the part, I try to make a little jig. In this case, it's just a little of plastic rod that I glued onto a piece of plastic sheet and then I, I super glued, in this case, the control column on there. So that gives me the opportunity to only hold the jig instead of the part itself and I stay away from all the parts I trying to glue on. It's very important and it's very helpful that you do this. It makes life also a lot easier while manipulating your, the part in question. Once you're done with detailing and the part is ready to glue it onto the model or after painting it, it easily snaps off. If it isn't the case, then just use, again, a sharp X-Acto knife or a scalpel and cut it and immediately it will snap off. If by any chance that you make a mistake and you glue the uh, photo wedge part onto the wrong a plastic part and you have to remove it very gently try to squeeze an exacto or a scalpel in between the two parts and try to really chip it off most of the time the photo wedge part will snap off immediately then make sure you clean it and reposition the part and glue it back on make sure you have some references next to you that you can simulate what you see in the picture. Again, Tamiya engineered their cockpit so well that it hardly needs any help. But a little wire here and there, a little knob uh, or a free floating cable will create a visual that I think is very important. It gives it a lot more organic, an organic look. It gives it a lot more depth whenever you have something that is free floating away from any sidewall or floor or also for painting purposes it's a lot easier. Assembly of the, the Mosquito cockpit is pretty straightforward. Tamiya made sure that the instructions are very clear. Everything is almost a perfect fit. It should not give you a lot of headaches of gluing the cockpit together. Just follow the instructions. The result is, is stunning. There's a lot of detail there. There is not much add-on detail required. Here you can see where I'm trying to simulate making new padding for the seat cushions. I use a plastic sheet base. You can see me sprinkling some talcum powder on that. The talcum powder is only there to prevent the billy putt sticking to the surface. Uh, it won't stick to the plastic sheet and it won't stick to the, to the, the, uh, the glass jar that I use as a rolling tool. Now you can use anything around the house in this case I had a little jar, paint jar, close to So 
anything that is smooth and round you can use. Once the, the milliput has the right thickness and you have to apply it, in this case to the cushion of the, of the navigator, just moisten it with a little bit of water. The water is necessary to basically dissolve the talcum powder and that will make the milliput stick to the surface better. Once the milliput is smoothed out, use any tool that you see fit to make pleats and creases. After you make the indentations, then dip your fine brush into the water and try to smooth out so the pleats are really, really uh, realistic looking. When using the water, when moistening the brush, sometimes you have to wipe the most of it. I do it on my hands here, but you can also use a cloth. But it's just to get the excess water off. In the next segment, the next chapter, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about application of the milliput and making belts and, and such out of it, a harness. That will be in our next video. So stay tuned. Jeffy signing off. I wanted to do a vol a volio. <laughs> in building this mosquito. Mosquito. What's a mo what is a mosquito? By staying a uh, yeah, okay. Shh. <laughs> Do it. Record. It's not ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited. Actually, this whole video of, uh, of the milliput, that's quite self-explanatory. It's quite entertaining too, even if I say so myself. <laughs>